Hi, this is Yahoo Sapin Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of T3M, our topic of this month. And the topic of this month is high availability disaster recovery. And today we have with us Jason Huff, Linux product owner at Cyrus Technology. Jason, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Wabnam. Good to be here. How do you see the evolution of users or use cases related to HADR as the adoption of cloud technologies is growing? You know, what we see, we see more and more companies are moving their workloads to the cloud, right? Uh, and, and therefore, we see an escalation in the uh, complexity of technology, but we also see uh, an increase in the severity of threats to these uh, IT infrastructures. There's things like uh, resource starvation, uh, natural disasters, power grid failures, and a slew of new and random disasters. And, you know, it makes it really difficult to insulate the, the whole enterprise, and even more so when, uh, when all of these components are running in the cloud. And, you know, despite uh, everyone's best efforts, there's still human errors, right? And that, and that causes significant downtime. And, and when you look at the things that we did to solve those problems uh, last year, uh, we need to update those to handle this year or next year's unprecedented outages. All of this makes it really critical to work with a vendor who has focused on uh, high availability for, for many, many years, uh, a vendor who has firsthand experience with finding solutions uh, to these random disasters. And the reason is users are, users are predominantly looking for solutions that provide high levels of protection but they also want to reduce the complexity that are involved. Uh, and this is really, really true when you're talking about uh, SAP, HANA, uh, SQL Server, Oracle, these big, huge, complex databases, which become uh, essential to the business ops. Uh, you're going to need more than just cloud native basic tools. Uh, you need high availability. Uh, and so that's that's really our focus at SIOS. Uh, the other thing is, System admins, they're changing, right, in, in terms of their skills and their knowledge, and, and they're being redirected to focus their expertise uh, in other critical areas because uh, the expectation for these cloud technologies is that they're simple, right? They're, they're user-friendly, they're intuitive, they're uh, easily accessible. Uh, so one example of how we're meeting this demand at SIOS is we're working on streamlining our current uh, failover engine uh, and we're adding a, additional self-help tools and, and mechanisms uh, so that when problems arise, uh, you know, these customers will be better equipped to troubleshoot and restore their, uh, their data and applications. When we look at cloud, it seems like a magical place, right? Once you move your applications there, hey, it's all done. You don't have to worry about security. You don't have to a backup. But uh, reality is different. They do offer, you know, an environment, but, you know, users are still responsible for a lot of things, though they do make things easier. But when it comes to high availability or DR, does cloud make it easier or it makes it more complicated for users? We deal with the most uh, complicated and the most essential applications in the entire industry. And whether they're on-prem or they've moved to the cloud, you know, application HA and DR is just intrinsically complicated. For, an, for any application to operate, everything in that IT stack has to be operational, it has to be uh, compatible, it has to be uh, available, and every cloud provider is different, right? So uh, providing HA and DR is a little bit different in each one. Also, more and more companies are actually using more than one uh, environment in the cloud, right? Multi-cloud. And that adds additional complexity. It adds the need for uh, additional knowledge from, from these folks. Uh, but the applications in the cloud, they're still vulnerable to unexpected outages. They're still vulnerable to unplanned downtime, just as they are in a data center. Uh, but in some respects, uh, you have a little less control in the cloud, right? Uh, so moving to the cloud, it's not the simple answer uh, these cloud availability SLAs, they usually just cover the hardware, so they can't provide HA and DR for uh, these stateful applications, not, with, not without degrading performance, all right? So uh, many HA clustering solutions, for instance, they, they can't fail over across cloud regions. Uh, they can't fail over across availability, availability zones. 
if that further limits the, the level of DR they can provide, you might say, well, is open source clustering, is that the answer? No, it, it, that requires highly complicated scripting, and that's also prone uh, to human error and failure. Uh, the manual steps required to ensure that these complicated ERPs or databases uh, they to fail over, it's really complicated, and it's also extremely order dependent, right? So these IT teams, they become hesitant to perform regular maintenance and failover testing. So to summarize all that, it, it really depends on the application. If it's not essential, then maybe the cloud is enough. But if that application is critical to your day-to-day -day operations, then you need highly automated HA clustering in order to protect it. Is HADR needed for cloud workload? Because as we discussed, cloud does take care of a lot of things. So talk about that. It does, um, but 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 it's still absolutely necessary. Uh, you know, and I, that's a, like you mentioned, it's a, it's a common misconception that can get folks in trouble because no cloud vendor is going to have all the tools, all the software and all the applications that you need baked into their cloud infrastructure, at, at least not in a way that your enterprise can consume. So, you're going you're gonna to migrate your workloads to the cloud, right, as uh, infrastructure as a service offerings. That's going to require someone or something to protect those workloads and make sure that they are highly available. So when a failure happens in the cloud, your application needs intelligent recovery of the failed components, the systems, the application resources, the infrastructure components, and all their dependencies. HA software, that's your first line of defense for identifying and remediating application failures. Uh, with these types of monitoring tools, uh, a failure can be detected uh, and remediated by the software even before users see an impact. So HA software, it, it helps you reduce and potentially eliminate the downtime even required for uh, things like upgrades, uh, patching. Uh, rolling preventative maintenance. Uh, you can use the software's, uh, you know, switchover and failover capabilities. So a standby server, you can actively patch it, update it, test it, and then uh, and then promote it to the uh, active availability node. And, and all of that just it, it ensures your critical systems uh, they're running on the most uh, latest and greatest release. Um, but you're also minimizing the risk of doing the, the upgrade, right? How are you folks making it easier for users? Because once again, cloud is complicated. When you look at Kubernetes, all those things, it becomes even more complicated. So, And that complexity is not going away. What we have to do is to make sure that customers are prepared to deal with this complexity, uh, lower the barrier of entry. So talk about what is SIOs doing, how your solutions are helping users so they can embrace these HADR you know, practices without you know, getting worried or overwhelmed with the complexity. And as we talked about a minute ago, in the cloud, SIOs clusters do fail across those regions and those availability zones. Uh, and that helps users achieve that maximum disaster recovery protection. Uh, and for customers who want to deploy multiple clusters, um, our LifeKeeper product, it has a feature that allows you to create multiple uh, identical clusters using consistent, predefined settings, uh, integrated best practices. So customers can achieve that four nines of availability and disaster protection for all of their workloads whether they're running on-prem, in the cloud, or some hybrid uh, environment. At, here at SIOS, we, we always build products with the customer's ease of use in mind. Uh, for instance, in our uh, most recent LifeKeeper release for uh, Linux, we introduced a new feature to support SAP HANA multi-target. And this enhancement uh, gives users the ability to, and the automation behind high availability and DR protection for HANA databases. So customers can, uh, can extend a traditional two node failover cluster to include additional nodes in DR locations without needing uh, complicated scripting, without all those administrative tasks that are, are prone to errors. Uh, LifeKeeper orchestrates all of this. It orchestrates the failover, uh, it manages the replication to the DR sites. So all of that's hands-free recovery from any types of faults, 
uh, failures or, or disasters. Let's talk specifically about cloud. What kind of solutions do you folks have for cloud users? We have high we offer high availability for cloud users like folks using AWS EC2 and Azure. Uh, one of the advantages in our solution is just the sheer scope of applications, operating systems, uh, infrastructure environments, all of which we support. So it's one single solution. It handles a customer's high availability and disaster recovery protection in any combination of physical, virtual, cloud, hybrid cloud, all of those infrastructures. Uh, we also uh, protect those essential databases, applications, and ERPs such as uh, SQL Server, uh, SAP S4 HANA, Oracle, MaxDB, and many, many more. You know, the MSPs that we work with, the managed service providers, they really value our ability to provide a consistent and reliable experience, regardless of whether customers are in a Windows or a Linux environment. So kind of to summarize, at SIOS, we continue to seek more ways to build a better experience for users to manage their HA and DR by reducing complex manual processes. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to enable users to leverage the power of the cloud without the risks. Jason, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show to talk more about what SIOS is you know, doing in this space. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks very much, Swapnil.